What's up everybody? Welcome back to Make It Custom. I know that uh, we didn't give away the hammer last video. We were planning on trying to sneak another video in there on the weekend. Didn't happen, so this is it. This is the hammer we're giving away. It's anybody who commented on the how to restore and refinish vintage hammers video. This is a couple of videos ago. We went through this hammer and uh, and all my hammers and fully restored it so that it's got just a beautiful face on it. So this one is a Proto 1427 nice old school body hammer. It's called a cross peen hammer because of this here and we're gonna give it away to one of the commenters right now. I was kind of overwhelmed with comments. I don't know if uh, we're always gonna do the comment thing because it buries everybody else's comments. <laughs> it was like 20 400 comments or something crazy like that. So I've got uh, this little YouTube giveaways app. I figured it out, technology, and uh, I've got the hammer video in there. I think I just pressed go. And so here it is, confirm video, start the giveaway. Oh man. Joey Chooch, Joey Chooch. This is your hammer. So, Joey, Chooch, give me a shout, email me, makeitcustom at gmail.com. Shoot me an email with your information, wherever you are in the world, I don't know if you're local or not, Australia, whatever, I will send you this hammer free of charge. This is for you, Joey, thanks for watching. Now, today's video is all about curved flanges. I'm gonna do a bit of a demonstration from the bead roller versus hammer forming, pros and cons as to how to make a curved flange. There's lots of times when you need a curved flange and bead rolling works great. You'll see, we'll have to kind of run it through a bunch of times, but the thing that a bead roller doesn't do is it doesn't shrink or stretch. So after you bead roll a flange, you have to shrink or stretch. As where a hammer formed flange pretty much holds it tight enough that the shrinking and the stretching of the flange happens within the hammer form. What I mean by shrinking and stretching is that, say if this is our template, which it is, if we had a flange here and we wanted to bend it down, hammer form it over or bead roll it over, because the arc is going this way, it means that there's more material on that flange than there is here. So it would have to shrink to be able to complete that 90 degree turn as where if it was this way and we were hammer forming it over because the curve is getting smaller, there's not enough material in this flange to do this bend. So as you hammer form, this will actually stretch, which is exactly what we're gonna do when we're bead rolling to try and uh, get that shrink and stretch in there as well. So I'm gonna start off by making my hammer form. I'm gonna cut out a couple pieces of sheet metal as our test pieces. And, uh, and we'll hammer form it first, and then we'll go to the bead roller and see how we can mimic the same part using one extra step, which is shrinking and stretching. Okay, let's do it. Now when you're hammer forming, this is gonna be our bottom piece. Your top piece has to be just a little bit smaller, like your clamping piece has to be just a little bit smaller or it's easier if it's just a little bit smaller. Some guys make them the full size, but I like to make the top piece that you're clamping, you're sandwiching the metal with a little bit smaller so you have a little bit more room for your hammer. And, uh, and that's what I'm gonna do right now. So how I'm gonna do that is I'm just going to kind of eyeball a little bit smaller, maybe like a quarter inch on each side is kind of enough. So I've got roughly a half inch gap here by where my mark is. So this is gonna be me making it a little bit smaller. Okay, so this is clamp and this is lower. Now, one of you guys looking out for my safety said, make sure you wear a dust mask. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, well I didn't find my respirator, but if it's good enough for COVID, it's gonna at least do something. Okay, yeah, looks pretty good. Just gonna clean it up just a little. 
our template fits nice. Our clamp piece is about a quarter inch back from the edge, which is good. Okay, now we're gonna mark out our piece. Okay, I'm just kind of going to freehand it just because it's just for demonstration's purpose. If you haven't seen me use this tool before, it's a Makita power shear. Love it. I'm not sponsored by Makita, but this is the best way to cut sheet metal like this, it's just unreal. It does 16 gauge, this little thing, and you can do curves and all sorts of stuff. The key thing if you're using one of these, which I see people misuse them all the time, is you don't wanna just go straight for your cut. You wanna creep up on it by a little bit because it, it tends to stretch the metal a little bit if it's held really, really tight on both sides with like a thick piece and a thick piece. So I'll just show you what I mean. I cut close to the line and then it peels off so easy when you go at it one more time. So if you're looking for something, this is the first thing I'd get before I buy a stomp shear or anything. If you don't have one of these, go for it. The other beautiful thing is that there's like barely any burr on that metal. Here's something I always forget to mention that uh, everybody asks me every single time, every video, <laughs> what material thickness am I using? This is 18 gauge sheet metal. I use 16 gauge for usually uh, like structure, that kind of thing, floor braces. But when it comes to um, exterior sheet metal or um, stuff that is not structural, 18 gauge. Most vintage cars, I would say Amer vintage American cars are 19 gauge for body stampings, but um, a little bit tougher to come by, so 18 gauge works great. So we're ready to clamp this in our hammer form. Here is what we're gonna do. Some guys would, and I have in the past, bolt this together or screw these together. If you have enough clamps, you don't need to bolt or screw your hammer form together. You don't have to fill the holes afterwards that way. What I'm gonna do for our demonstration today is I'm going to do it with just clamps. So as long as you got some beefy clamps, you should be fine. In fact, I'll probably use the vise for some of it. Also gonna run an extra couple clamps just to be sure. The last thing you want is any movement. You don't want this to slip out at all. So if you're not gonna use screws, make sure you have big clamps. Having said that, four screws, like small screws, they don't even have to be big screws, but four screws will hold this together quite well and it definitely wouldn't let it slip out. Okay, so we're gonna do this outer curve first. I'm gonna hammer this in and what you're gonna notice as I'm hammering is that this metal is gonna wrinkle a little bit and what that's doing is it's trying to shrink itself because it has nowhere to go. You're clamping it and forcing it to go and curve this edge so it has to go somewhere and what it does is it will shrink itself in a hammer form. All right, Christina's got her earplugs on. I got mine in. Let's go for it. The other key thing to remember is you wanna do this very slowly, very gradually. You don't wanna tip this all the way over on one end and then start trying to work it. It'll just make a mess. So take your time, go all the way along, all the way along and just keep slowly folding it over. See these wrinkles that are happening? That is the gathering of the extra material. So we've got more material here 
than we do along this broken edge. So it's got to go somewhere. It's trying to push itself together. So I'm trying to hit the tops of the wrinkles to try and force them together. And now, once the bottoms of the wrinkles start hitting that MDF, then we're really gonna be able to see some of that metal go together. Okay, so what I want to point out to you guys right now is that in some areas, the hammer form was a little bit too weak. So we've got little imperfections like this. See this little divot here? It wrinkled itself into the softer MDF. And that's not really a big deal because those, those little imperfections, we can easily hammer and dolly those out. Now, let's talk about the shrink. Because you can actually see that pattern in there almost where the shrinks have happened. You see these lines? That's the metal like pushing itself together. I think it is anyway, the stress marks. Unless that's just a funky pattern that my hammer hit. So next we are gonna try stretching. We're gonna throw this form back into the vise here. I'm really not gonna add the other clamps because it really has nowhere, nowhere to go now that it's holding itself with this other flange. For this, I'm gonna use a hammer with a little bit more crown in it uh, because it's got a curve this way. If I was using a flat hammer like this, it would probably dig in on the edges because there's more curve here than there is on the face of my hammer. Okay, so I've got this other one. It's got a little bit more curve on the face. I'm still actually, I'm not even sure exactly what this one is for. I believe it's gotta be more of a, a stretching hammer because of the profile of the ends of this. So I'm also gonna use this one, which has a heavy radius on the end and we'll use it to try and fold it over. Maybe it'll stretch our metal a little bit more is all I'm saying, because like I said before, this area of material is not enough to cover this so it has to stretch itself out a little bit. It's actually, this hammer's doing a fine job. I probably don't need that other one. But you can see how it's, it's pulling this edge tight because there's not enough material. We're not getting this wrinkle of material being pushed in because it's actually trying to pull it out a little bit. So like if I hammer on here, it's, you can see it pulling. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Okay, that about proves my point. All right, so clamp piece off. Look at that fit. So we've got curved flanges on both sides, inside and outside radiuses. This stayed nice and flat because of our hammer form. You can see there's a little bit tipped up on the edges. That'll happen because it's not held past that. But look at that, dead flat. We're dead flat there. We're dead flat there. That's the beauty of hammer forming. It's relatively easy to cut MDF and, and make yourself a little clamp when you're making a little piece like this. It really didn't take that long, but it's the extra step of making the clamp. Whereas the extra step with the bead roller is shrinking that edge. Now let's hop onto the bead roller. We're gonna try and make the exact same piece out of our other chunk of metal, but we're gonna use the bead roller instead. Okay, here we go. So this is a tipping wheel, this top wheel, when you see a top wheel that's uh, a little bit sharpened, you know, it's got a point, 
It's called a tipping wheel because we're trying to tip this flange. I use this wheel for a couple of different things. I also make my patterns with it. If you've seen me make scale, or not scale patterns, but the diamond tufted pattern, I'll use this with a rubber wheel on the bottom. I shaped this. It came in an Eastwood forming die set, but it was kind of, um, it was still called a tipping wheel, but it was sort of flat, like the width of this die, it was flat on the top. So I, I did sharpen it up a little bit. And then when you're tipping, some guys use a skateboard wheel on the bottom. I like to use a hard wheel sometimes. This is just the flat part of a different wheel for a different purpose. So it really doesn't matter as long as you've got the right shape you want. So as far as tipping is concerned, what we're doing is we're gonna clamp this wheel. It doesn't have to be um, you know, insanely hard or anything. We're gonna run it through here and almost give like a little bit of a pinch. A little bit of a pinch in that corner so that our bend knows to start there. It's the easiest place for that metal to start bending because it's already got that little bit of a pinch. So I'm gonna go ahead and run it through. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one. Okay, now the next step in, uh, in tipping is just to add pressure up. So we're basically just pinching it right in the corner, adding a little bit of pressure up, and it's gonna start to make our bend right along that tipped corner. So I'm just adding pressure up. See, after one pass, we've got this, got that crease starting. You're gonna see the more that we do this, it'll either get a wave here or our panel will start to bend here. And that's once again, because this edge will need to be shrunk. Okay, so you see where we're at now. Like I said, the, uh, it was either gonna make this wavy or it was gonna put a curve in our main panel. Look at how much curve it's already put in there. We're only at about a 45 degree tip and, uh, and, it's, and it's already distorted our panel that much because of how much shrink it needs here. So at this time, it's getting a little bit harder to continue tipping this edge up because it's forcing into this panel. So I'm gonna relieve this by shrinking it. So now I've just taken a few shrinks out of it. I could probably do a couple more, but you see how much flatter that panel is already? I'll probably do a few more. I'm actually gonna go even a little extra because we know it is gonna need more. Okay, so now I've gone, I've gone the other way a little bit. I've given it a little more shrink than it needs at this angle. So we're gonna run it through a few more times and continue tipping that edge over. All right, so we went through a few more times. We're almost at 90, but there is a bit of a limitation on my die here because it's got a bevel on both sides. I can't quite tip it all the way up. So I'm gonna finish this off with a, just a hammer and a dolly and get the, the tip all the way to 90. Right now it's probably at 80 degrees or something, but you can see that uh, we went you know, overboard with the shrinker, kind of pre-shrunk some of our flange. Now we're back to needing even more shrinking. It's already curved itself again. So there is quite a bit of shrinking that does happen in a flange on an outside radius like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and shrink her up. I'm actually even just kind of tweaking it with the shrinker a little bit, trying to tip that edge even further in and it's working. So I probably don't even need to hammer and dolly it. Just gotta be careful that I don't go too far. I wanna keep this nice and straight and pretty good, pretty good. 
So there's our curved flange. You can see how much shrinking that took. Now let's do the inside one and see how much stretching it will take. Same deal as before, we're just gonna time lapse it. I'm just gonna run over this a bunch of times. I'm gonna jump on the stretcher, do that, and just work at it until we get the same result as this side. Okay, so I just wanna finish up this flange. I'm gonna use a hammer and dolly just to try and get it finished up. Excuse the condition of my dolly, it is very stained. It looks pretty good. I did stretch this a little bit too much, I can tell. You can see I messed up a little bit. So I just gotta go backwards, throw it in the shrinker, get that straight, and then we'll compare them. All right, so fresh off the bead roller and the stretcher shrinker, this is our bead rolled piece. Come have a look at the edges. This is the real difference to me, is that you've gotta do a bunch of shrinking on the edges, it's a little bit difficult to continue controlling that panel while you're, while you're shrinking, but it can be done. I mean, it, it absolutely can be done and it doesn't take a whole lot of time. We could make this flange nicer by um, just using one of our polished hammers and a dolly and we could go over it and we could make it beautiful. We could sand it, we could absolutely make it beautiful. So there's no real right or wrong either way. Some guys don't have a bead roller. Hammer forming is a great way to make something like this. I personally prefer to hammer form when I can because it just creates a flatter piece. Like this, this piece came out of the form you saw and it was dead flat, no messing around. So a little bit of uh, hammer forming in a panel like this I think is, uh, is the way to go. But regardless, both ways work tremendously. They, they're both the exact same piece. There's nothing different about them other than the way they were made. So that is my two cents on tipped flanging bead roller versus hammer forming. These edges, like the hammer formed edge here, we could have taken our hammer and dolly and just tapped out these little imperfections and, and worked at it. But I'm just doing this to show you guys what's the difference between both of these. Hopefully this has been helpful for curved flanges. I know that uh, when I first discovered being able to make a curved flange without having to weld a curved flange, it definitely helped me in a lot of different panels. It kind of expanded my way of thinking as to my pre-thoughts to making a panel, if you can, uh, if you can kind of get what I mean there. A couple of things I want to go over before the end of this video. Number one is, yes, we are working hard on getting these planishing hammers out to the people that have ordered them. Our planishing hammers have been delayed for quite some time. It's, you know, material shortages, delayed shipping time for COVID. There's no real excuse. I mean, I, I kind of take responsibility for these being late. It's unfortunate, but uh, that's where we're at. We are seeing our pieces all coming through the machine shop right now. I've just been messaged and updated that, uh, you know, half of our dies have been done. There's 650 of them on this run. So as you can imagine, it takes a lot of time. We're kind of at the mercy of our heat treaters as well. After the dies are finished machining, they go to the heat treater, they're there for however long that they need them for, uh, depending on their workload, and then we get to bring them back. Then we get to recut the dies one more time, 650 of them, and then laser them as well. So those are kind of our hold up. Next week, I'm gonna be getting all the machine parts so that I can start actually fabricating all the hammers. I've already got all the tube bends. I'm just waiting on the hinge pieces, the lower die holders. This is for the people that have ordered the planishing hammers. So I just wanna publicly apologize for the delay. <laughs> you've all received an email already if you've purchased a hammer. The other thing that's coming up next week, and uh, we've had some delays as well. The website has been out of stock on some t-shirts, some hoodies, all that is restocked. 
as of this coming weekend. We are having a Black Friday sale. You know, everybody does one and we appreciate you guys. So all of our merch is 20% off. The hammers themselves will be 10% off. So if you guys wanna get in on some deals, this weekend's the weekend to do it. Congratulations again to uh, Joey Chooch for winning the hammer. I'm gonna send that out to you right away. And everybody have a great week. We'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching Make It Custom. Don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. We'll catch you on the next one.